One of Ed Greenwood's very first stories is something called One Comes Unheralded to Zerta, and it takes place in the southern half of what is now known as Scornubel. Scornubel is one of the Forgotten Realm's foremost dens of iniquity. If your D&D party has ever ended up there, you probably know what I'm talking about. Today, Ed Greenwood is here to tell us all about what many consider to be D&D's equivalent to the Star Wars Cantina on Tatooine. Did you know that the style of music played at the Moss Eisley Cantina is called <laughs> music? I honestly don't know if I can say that on YouTube. Look it up. Definitely hit the subscribe button if you love the realms and you want more content like this. It helps us more than you know, and it lets us know that you want us to keep going. And if you want to get your hands on a t-shirt like this, or this fancy unsupervised wizard mug, check out Ed's shop. Link in the description. This is part one of a two-part series, so be sure to check out part two, where I ask Ed to fill in details from the perspective of a GM getting ready to run their first game in Scornabelle. So, looking for a Star Wars cantina spot in the realms, where all races, including monsters, cross paths in a largely lawless setting to trade, a rough and ready city where you can buy anything? Welcome to Scornubel, the caravan city, and it is the major caravan rendezvous, mustering, transshipping to barges for travel mainly down the River Chianthar to Eltergard and Baldur's Gate, but also to Burdusk and up the river reaching to Hill's Edge, and warehousing center in the Sword Coast. Waterdeep and Baldur's Gate are busier, but they lack the space for cheap wagon repairs and long-term storage, and caravans often make runs to them offload, then run on empty, well out into the countryside to avoid thievery, vandalism, and high fees to await local small wagon runs out to them so they can fill their wagons and move on. Scornabel, by contrast, has always been more spacious and muddy, <laughs> with visitors sleeping in their wagons and tolerance for parking and camping anywhere that doesn't block a thoroughfare or access to a local business. And the caravans bring a lot of visitors, wayfarers in realms parlance, in spring, summer, and fall. The city's winter population in the 1490s DR of about 22,000 swelling to as much as eightfold, but a base of threefold is the usual summer norm. Scornubel is where thievery is rampant and cabals and cults flourish, and amid the monsters citizens are used to seeing, thanks to the city's traditional staged monster battles, where in real world there was dogfighting and cockfighting and bear baiting. In Scornivelle, they unleash cage monsters to fight each other, and people bet on it, and so on. But citizens are used to seeing not just the monsters, but mm. red wizards, Zentrim, mm. orcs, Lamia, mm. and even drow, illithids, and wan tea stride or slither the streets openly because there's no local constabulary to stop them. There are hired adventuring bands, some of them hardened and capable, who keep the peace by dealing with murderers, arsonists, and street brawls on behalf of the High Lord or the Lady High Lord, depending on who's in charge at the time. While they're on such duty, Scornabel calls them the Hounds. No matter what their company or other adventuring band name is, a corruption of the formal term, the High Lord's Hounds. The High Lord's Hands became, over time, the Hounds. The High Lord's Hounds and then the Hounds. Right now, the High Lord of Scornobel is Lady High Lord Rava Kavar Shield, a lawful neutral female half-orc wizard seven Intelligence 18, Wisdom 16, who stands a muscular and buxom nine feet tall, is strikingly beautiful, and is customarily demure and quiet, with a low, husky alto voice. But she can, of course, bellow like a foghorn when she feels the need. She succeeded High Lord Merax Hamilar who was murdered in the street by two merchants he'd swindled. These two then tried to seize rule of Scornubel, dubbing themselves the Merchant Princes, but they were dead by nightfall. After the mercenary band they'd hired as bodyguards defected to <laughs> Rava Kavarshield. <laughs> Hamilar, High Lord from 1453 DR to 1479 DR, and chiefly remembered as the High Lord who, quote, broke us free of Eltergard, repudiating the annexation into that realm that befell in the city's lean times, with trade dwindling at the height of the spell plague, and the city's first High Lord, 
Obran Marhi, a perpetually smirking half-elf bard who'd earned the loathing of every Scornubrian over his long and corrupt tenure, 1404 to 1453 DR, and he's widely thought to have seduced the previous lord of the city, the elderly lady Rasaja and Ambermantle, and strangled her when they were abed together, you're proclaiming himself the city's first high lord in 1404 DR. If this swift summary makes it seem to you that might makes right in Scornubel, and that holding open ruling power is both an invitation to corruption and a dangerous occupation, you've grasped what life in Scornubel is like. Moreover, the caravan city has always had problems with doppelgangers, slaying and impersonating citizens and wayfarers alike. If you're enjoying this video, please like, subscribe, and hit the little bell icon so you won't miss future videos. Now, it, it takes time and money to make these things, and I dearly love doing them, and I would like to go on sharing the realms with you. So if you'd like to support me, please check out my Patreon and consider becoming a protector of the realms. So, um, hmm. Why come to Scornubel to court such daily danger? Well, there's the freedom. Then there's all the money you can have access to as unscrupulous and recklessly risk-taking sponsors abound. And of course, you can get almost anything in Scornubel. And even if you're after poisons or their antidotes, or magic items, or spell scrolls, or co complex and formidable automatons to use as guards, there'll be local competition, not just one guild or crime boss whose price and terms you'll have to meet. Contrary to what tavern talk may have you believe, magic items are not for sale in shops on every third or fourth street corner in Feru. If you're after something more mundane and safer to handle than magic items or gond devices that explode or pulverize or roast, Scornubel is the place on the Sword Coast where at any one time you can buy more bulk barley, raw or milled, or any other grain, loose or in sacks, from one cellar. Again, Baldur's Gate, Waterdeep, and even Athcatla likely hold more of a particular grain in various granary warehouses, but that's just it. They're the various warehouses of many cellars, and in all of those places either guilds set prices high, or once word spreads, faster than you can run as it's spread by street youths who can really scamper that someone is buying say cornmeal everyone will raise their prices so by the time you find the last granary to buy from you'll be paying as much as twice what you emptied the first granary for so if you're a wagon merchant or want to hire on as a caravan guard, there are always more than a dozen, usually closer to a score, of trading costers with paddocks and warehouses in Scornubel, and they're always in need of new hands. Scornubel is the refuge for disgraced adventurers who swiftly departed a Sword Coast city after too well-publicized an atrocity, or <laughs> making too formidable a foe, or three. So swords and spells for hire are always plentiful. And increasingly, the caravan city is a home for smiths and crafters of all sorts and levels of skill, from master glass blowers and lockmakers to jewelers who can craft fine counterfeits with astonishing speed and all manner of menders. It's always been known as a place to buy new wagons or wagon wheels or axles or get your current weary conveyance repaired and Scornabel has been around for almost 2,000 years, albeit under different names. All of it south of the Chionthar was the rival city of Zerta until the War of Lords. These days, it can boast competing local shipyards on both banks of the Chionsar that are very good with barges, narrow boats, we would call them houseboats if they were covered, but most of them are used for fast cargo shipments, whereas the barges are more for slow bulk carrying. And by the way, the barges are the only way to move livestock. And they're also good at skiffs, small, fast, and mainly used for ferrying people with their personal belongings. To us, a skiff is the slightly larger boat equivalent of a canoe. A shrine to almost every known deity, even beholder cults, can be found behind closed doors in the city, if one asks discreetly, 
Though there are open temples to Lathander, the healing house of Lathander it's called, look for its new rose brick obelisk, and Joaquin, the house of fair fortune, built to look like a gem coffer, both on major streets in North Bank, Scornubel. Those temples and Scornubel Hall, which stands East Front Tradeway, both the home of the Lady High Lord and where she governs from, though city gossip insists she keeps a modest hidehold residence in northeast North Bank for enjoying an endless succession of one-night lovers she chooses from among wayfarers whose faces she doesn't know, are the only really architecturally distinctive buildings in the city, unless one counts the difference between shack and solid potential warehouse. Scornabel has more solidly built, large, multi-purpose buildings than anywhere else in known Faroon, with much use made of stone, mud-sealed cob, and daub-sealed log construction. Massive buildings with large rooms inside, usually with board or tile roofs. So though many of these buildings have been subdivided into labyrinths of small rooms and winding passages inside to offer rental rooms or offices, most of them look like warehouses from the outside. Most of them are warehouses, and this abundance of secure space, coupled with visiting wayfarers saving coin by sleeping in their own wagons, keeps rents relatively low. It also means that inside this or that weathered, bland-looking, sprawling warehouse, there could be a full-on temple to Asmodeus, or a necromancer's zombies and skeletons for sale factory, or an armory of rental or sale matching weapons for the well-equipped army, or the Scornubrian equivalent of that Star Wars cantina, a tavern, sometimes with body or raucous entertainment, but more often not. Locals will tell you where the bards and minstrels wail, and where you can hire a warm embrace for a night. Fortunes rise and fall with trade, so buildings in the city change hands rapidly and renters depart and new ones move in, so permanent landmarks are few. The hot club or tavern of one season may be gone entirely the next. With that said, as the realms knocks on the door of 1500 DR, Mert tells me, that the foremost fest hall in Scornubel is still Mother Minx's, though younger and edgier patrons prefer the Jester's Bells, which, by the way, is also the city's only public bathhouse. The foremost gambling club and rental feasting hall is the Nightshade Nightclub, the best clean, orderly, and high-class tavern in the heart of the city is Varamber's Jack with the Thirsty Thunder Beast, now relocated to new premises on the northeastern edge of the city, its fiercest competitor. The most notorious brawling dive of a tavern is the Smiling Siren on the North Bank docks, and the best large, middling coin family eateries are the Brazen Basilisk in the former Zerta, and Merigo's board on the western edge of North Bank Scornabel. As far as inns go, the old established Far Anchor, the Traveler's Rest, and the Raging Lion, now just an inn, the taproom was closed after the fourth major brawl and fire gutted it and rebuilt as rental suites, are considered the best in the city largely because they are firmly policed and so quiet, and because every rental room has its own room-to-lie-and-soak bathing facilities. It should be noted that the Traveler's Rest no longer displays the nailed-up, withering, severed hands of unfortunates caught thieving on its premises. And that's Scornubel, a seething cauldron of thieves, as Open Lord Pigurin of Waterdeep once described it. A place well-suited to adventurers, is current open lords Laryl's politer description, and I'll leave the final word on the caravan city to Elminster, who termed it, If you're starved for entertainment, tis a nice place to visit, in Wraith form. Welcome to Realm Speak, and today in Realm Speak we're going to be doing this. Pisathes! What? I say these? This is the creator deity of Aboleths, created by Carl Sargent, and it introduced into the realms by Eric Boyd. A female deity, so it's a she. I say these is how you pronounce this tongue twister of a name, though you will hear folk in the eastern lands of Faroon, like Durpar, Murgom, Malhor, and Unser and Semfar, 
say Pisathes, Pisathes, unless you're in the East, in which it's Pisathes. But, you know, don't get into a fight about it, because <laughs> that will just entertain and amuse. And it's really good for a dungeon master putting an adventure in that is wrapped around the long trip from the Sword Coast to inland, or from inland to the Sword Coast, and it, it, it means instead of it just being a long thing where he rolls for wandering monsters, it, yeah, it becomes yeah. um, an in-game adventure.